Shamai, I'm Hannah and welcome to The Purple Sector. With no Formula One on this weekend, the stage is set for one of the most prestigious racing events of the year, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And I'm going to be giving you a quick breakdown into what it is and what happens so you can follow one of the jewels in the Triple Crown of Motorsport. Usually, the 24 Hours of Le Mans is held back in June. However, because of the current situation, it got moved to September. The 88th iteration of the event is being held on the 19th and 20th of September with the race starting at 2.30pm Central European time or 1.30pm if you like me and in the UK. And it finishes on the same time on the Sunday. This will be the penultimate round of the 2019-2020 FIA World Endurance Championship. So firstly, we have the cars. Le Mans 24 hours is split into four categories, otherwise known as classes. We have the LMP1s, LMP2s, GT Endurance Pros and GT Endurance AMs. The LMP groups are purpose-built race cars. LMP1s are all-wheel drive, we are around 870 kilograms, including the driver, and achieve around 1,000 horsepower, with teams able to evolve and modify their bodywork and chassis. LMP2s are kind of like the younger siblings. LMP2 teams have four chassis they can choose from, which can't be altered and weigh around 930 kilograms. The cars are rear-wheel drive only and use a 4.2 metre Gibson engine. This means the LMP2 cars are around 10 seconds a lap slower than the LMP1s. Then you have the GT Endurance Pro and GT Endurance AM classes. These look more like road cars similar to Porsche 911s or Ford GTs. The difference between the two categories is that GT AM teams must field at least one amateur driver and the cars must be at least a year old to save money. All the cars on the grid must have closed cockpits. They also can have no more than two doors and they must have room to fit a second seat, however usually they don't have to. This year we have five LMP1 entries, 24 in LMP2, 8 for GTE Pro 22 entries for GTAM. Several teams get automatic entries such as the 2019 24-hour Le Mans winners in each of the categories and also the winners of the European Le Mans, Asian Le Mans and Michelin Le Mans Cup series. Previously qualifying used to be done over three sessions but this year it's been reduced to just one. 45 minutes on Thursday afternoon will set the grid except for 24 of the cars, the top six in each category. These top six will have a 30 minute shootout on Friday morning for each class to set the grid known as Le Mans Hyperpole. Now, on to the race. On the grid, the cars are set first by category and then by time. So LMP1s line up first, then LMP2s, then GTE Pros, and then GTE AMs. Then in each of the categories, the six cars that qualify for Hyperpole will be ordered first by the best Hyperpole time, and then the rest of the cars ordered by the time in the earlier qualifying session. The race takes place on the Circuit de la Sainte which is a mix of regular racetrack and public roads, which provides an interesting challenge for the drivers, considering up to around 85% of the race is spent on full throttle, thus reducing the likelihood of strong reliability. The race is won by the car that covers the greatest distance during those 24 hours, and four prizes are awarded to the winners of each class, as well as the overall winner. To be classified at the end of the race, you have to complete the final lap of the race, must complete the entire circuit below the maximum prescribed lap time, and have completed 70% of the distance covered by the overall race winner. Each team has three drivers who take it in turns to race, as no driver can race for more than 240 minutes in a six hour period. The teams to look out for are the number eight Toyota Gazoo Racing in the LMP1 class, with Sebastian Bromi, Brendan Hartley, and Kazuki Nakajimi. Sebastian and Kazuki won the race last year alongside Fernando Alonso. The 2019 Formula 2 champion Nick De Vries will be racing for Racing Team Nederland in the number 29 car in the LMP2 category. Newly crowned Formula E champion Antonio Felix da Costa races in the number 38 Jota Sport car in the LMP2 class. The LMP2 class will also see an all-female racing car in car number 50 for Richard Mille Racing Team. The team consists of Alfa Romeo test driver Tatiana Calderon, Formula 3 driver Sofia Flirsch and Bitska Vissa, who achieved second in the inaugural W Series last year. For me, I'll be keeping an eye on the LMP2 class and rooting for the number 22 United Auto Sports car of Philippe Albuquerque, Phil Hansen and Paul DeResta. Let me know in the comments below who you'll be supporting at Le Mans 24 hours this year. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment below and I will see you soon. Au revoir! <laughs>